What is Jamaica's biggest export? And a query for Leo. This call is for any passenger having left a bottle of champagne in the Gaines Grid area. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Seven thirty a.m. at Luton Airport and eight EasyJet flights have already left the stands. The morning Glasgow flight is due to leave in 25 minutes, and check-in shut five minutes ago, as Joanna Wood is about to find out. I'm just saying that when it's a question of five minutes, which it is from when I actually arrived, I arrived five minutes too late to check in. I think when you're talking five minutes, and there is a seat still on the plane, and that I can take it as hand luggage, I don't think it's good enough to say I can't go on it. I think you should be understanding about the fact that sometimes Connex, South East or whoever runs that service cancels it with one minute to, wait, what, right, to go. Well, and to. Joanna has to get to a business meeting, but the fuel and weight figures for the flight have been finalised, so no new passengers can be accepted. Theo Agru and Kirsty Clark try to explain. I'm going to say this to you. The supervisor's going to come down, but you're not going to get on the flight. There is no one in the airport who's going to is get you on the flight. Gone? Has that seat gone? gone? Right, why can't I go with hand luggage? What is the problem? You're not here on time. You're not here on time. That's not my fault. It's not our fault. I want to get to Glasgow. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. I was on the east side. Joanna is determined to get to Glasgow, and a call from her friend, already in departures, provides her with the ammunition she's looking for. Right, excuse me, excuse me. That flight's been delayed by 20 minutes. Why can't you get me on? That flight that I'm being talking about to Glasgow, which you stand too late to check in on, it's been delayed by 20 minutes. You can get me on it now. Joanna's colleague is about to board the plane she should be on. Uh, she's been told 20. I don't believe it. She's been told 20 at the end. Uh, I'm sorry. You're doing this just to be obstructed. Why is my colleague telling me 20 minutes? I have just asked her. By the way, I should tell you I'm a journalist. They're saying it's only a five minute delay. Are they definitely telling you 20? Okay, hang on. It's, I've just been told they're not boarding for another 15 minutes at least. I did check it in for you and they said no again. Right, well, somebody's not telling the truth here, aren't they? And it's not my colleague. Joanna heads off looking for some answers. 200 miles away at EasyJet's Liverpool base, purser Mark Hobson is preparing for his first flight of the day. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to EasyJet and this morning's... Mark has a big day ahead of him. When he finishes work, he's appearing on the ITV quiz show, The People Vs. I must admit, I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous indeed. But I'm looking forward to it as well. It's like a, a sort of nervous excitement, you know? The whole idea of the quiz show is there's people's nurses, uh, and I'm going to have loads of people on the, the flight today. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'll have a bit of a chat with them later on on the PA and see if I can get a few of the uh, passengers to ask me a few questions just to uh, uh, get, me, get my head in the, in the right gear. Still firmly on the ground in Luton, Joanna Wood is refusing to take no for an answer. Airport duty manager Carol Ann Hammond has been called down. Sorry, what's your name? My name's Joanna Wood. Right, have you been booked on the next flight, Miss Wood? No, I haven't, yeah, because I'm booked on this flight. I really do not see why you can't get me on this one if it's been delayed. It's so important that we get our first wave away in the morning on to, as close to one yeah, time as possible. Yeah, I know. It's important for me too. OK, it's very regretful that you're late for your flight, but you've missed it. I can get you on it. it. If you'd done I'm something... Please, please, please. No, There's no point in arguing. I am it. arguing, because if you'd done something when I first came in, I, and let you know, back when I first talked to my colleague, who checked in and let you know that I was delayed through no fault of my own. Right, OK. Do you want to come over to the sales No, then? I want to get on this flight. You're not going to get on it. That's what we're saying. It's too late. Time you will up. not be, be flexible at all on this. Thank you. Finally admitting defeat, Joanna heads back to the sales desk for Theo to transfer her onto the next flight. But there's more bad news. I've just had a look now at the seats available. Then five minutes ago, there were seats. There have been other people who missed the flight. They're saying now I can't get on that. I'll have to talk to you when you get the other end. Bye. 
that's not yeah. good enough. You've got to get me on that flight because it's your incompetence and all this messing around. It's, that, no, it's you. Not, can I just say something? It's not my incompetence. It is your incompetence in messing Why? me around at this end. We, we're not. Whether the fight is delayed or not, you have to understand we're not contractually obliged to, to take you there because you missed your check-in. I understand. Uh, look, I understand what you're saying. I think you're being very we have inflexible. To give good, we have to give good customer service. The customer is priority. Well, I don't feel like priority at the moment. But it comes from head office. I can't be flexible either. Right, well, get um, on to head office and get me on that flight. That's a problem now. Uh, I've been told that there's no room on the 9.25, despite being led to believe 10, 15 minutes ago that there was. Oh, I'm just... OK. Best thing we can do... We don't actually have a, a standby system as such, but under the circumstances... I can't do this. I can't, can't not be a whole day in Scotland. Right, let's, let's just take it right back, right, and let's, let's, let's try and solve okay. this. Just never mind what's no, no, happened no. before. I Madam, want this one sorted. Madam, with all due respect, we're the only people that can sort it for, right, for you. So what we'll do, may well be some no-show passengers. If there's no shows, that we, then we'll do everything we can to get you on. However, there's a risk that you won't actually be guaranteed to sit. Well, we can't guarantee you a seat at the moment because they're all so wonderful. My perfect morning. For Joanna, it's now a waiting game. Sorry, Theo, you caught that one. And it was a matter of literally three minutes um, after they closed down the check-in. They knew I was going to be late. Uh, if they'd done something straight away, you know, if they were flexible enough, three minutes... I know rules are rules, but three minutes is hardly here or there. She wants us basically to chuck someone else off. And although she knows how it, it, it feels to miss a flight, she wants to chuck someone else so she can uh, get the next flight. Uh, which, I don't, if she knows about life, I don't think life is that easy, to be honest. Up in the air, quiz show fanatic Mark Hobson decides to let the passengers in on his secret. I have a bit of a, a sad hobby, which I'm going to confess to everybody on board the aircraft, which is I'll take part in uh, quiz shows on TV. Uh, and today is a bit of a big day to me because after we finish the flight today, I'm on my way down to London for a quiz show called The People Versus. So uh, if you could try and think of a general knowledge question to test me on, because um, I could really do with the practice. Captain Jerry York gets the ball rolling. What we'd like to know is just how much fuel that we're going to use from Liverpool to Amsterdam this morning. Within the nearest half a gallon will do nicely. Six and a half thousand. Do you reckon higher or lower than six and a half thousand litres, everybody? Higher, higher than six and a half thousand. I reckon it's going to be lower. You reckon two and a half thousand? You told me. <laughs> About two and a half thousand litres? No, uh, it's not too bad. We'll give you the exact figures. 2,746. Oh, how's about that? <laughs> That's quite a good guess, actually. Not bad. And the passengers give Mark some last minute practice on his general knowledge. Hi, yeah. What's Jamaica's biggest ex export? Jamaica's biggest exports, Bob Marley. Oh, Red Stripe, right. yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. You see all the stuff? Yeah, I should have known that straight away. What's the uh, fastest uh, speed a human has travelled? It's about 40,000 miles an hour when they're orbiting the Earth. Is, is that the one? 25,000 miles. 25,000 miles yeah, an hour. It is in the space, right? This is brilliant. It's absolutely fun. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Mark may be enjoying the practice, but can he get it right when it comes to the real thing? On the ground in Luton, dispatcher Jane Bolton is welcoming in the morning Madrid flight. Oh, it's great! My favourite captain, Craig Bolton. Say his surname for me. But life in dispatch has its own challenges. Oh, can you put it down? Because I can't... I don't do buggies, but I can't put buggies down. I always hold the baby. Thank you. Can I hold the little one when we get to the stairs and you put the buggy down? So if I try and put it down, I'll break it, knowing me. Oh, hello. Look at the plane. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you go, my love. Thanks Anywhere with a grey headrest. Thanks. Do you want to like mother material? Problem solved, or so it seems. Oh, 
can't you? <laughs> I don't believe I've just done that. Um, help me, someone! Fellow dispatcher Steve Hurd comes to the rescue. But there are some things that dispatch training just doesn't prepare you for. Inside, there's good news for Joanna and Theo. A seat has finally become available on the 9.25 to Glasgow. So what do I do? I go and check in there now. Straight away now. Can I, is this my, this is my receipt, yeah? confirmation and total expenses, yeah? Right, OK. Thanks. It looks like Joanna will make her meeting after all. I think she got the message in the end. Especially when the manager came over. Out in dispatch, the buggy is still causing problems, and Jane is still keeping her distance. Defeated by modern technology, Steve resorts to plan B. <laughs> <laughs> There's a button at the top. I tried to fix it on the side and I wanted to move it. As I lifted it up, it just went, went oh no, I can't believe it. With the dirty work complete, Jane finishes off the job. I'm getting good at that now. One upright buggy. <laughs> when she gets to Glasgow, she'll probably think, oh, how nice, they put it up for me already. Still to come, a summer holiday is at stake. Let's get the, the, the airplane, I'll go and forget about us. And will Mark's nerves get the better of him? It's beginning to get to me a little bit now, I think. Every week at Luton Airport, over 400 items are handed into lost property. This call is for any passenger having left a bottle of champagne in the Gainsgrid area. So can you contact the EasyJet customer service desk? 7,000 people start running out towards the desk. <laughs> Today's supervisor, Leo Jones, is on the case to track down the owner of the morning's latest find. It was left round in the game room, so I'm assuming that the passengers have been told that they can't take it on board the aircraft, but it looks like quite expensive stuff. How much do you reckon, Kirsty? What time do I write? How much of it all day? Yeah. <laughs> no, how much do you reckon it costs? I just want to know if I can have it, that's the more important thing. There's a little, like, six-year-old kid that found it. <laughs> that age, I'd have been in a cupboard with it. <laughs> Over in Arrivals, quiz show addict Mark Hobson has finished his shift. Jerry, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, have a good time. That's yeah, so all day. Best of luck. Thank you. Um, we'll put, I'll put part of my pension on your uh, performance. Oh, I, never so I need the help. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Mark has already tried his luck in three quiz shows. Today he's taking part in ITV's The People Versus, and he's hoping to win some serious money. Liverpool Airport, and 11-year-old Chloe Beard isn't having a good day. How good was it? <laughs> no, you'll be all right, don't worry. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Chloe and her friends are meant to be jetting off to Nice for a summer holiday, but there's been a last-minute hitch. Well, we went, we went in the car to go to my friend's dad's house and I looked at my passport photo and then she realised it was going out our date tomorrow. So then my dad didn't know about that. So then when we got to his house, we told my dad and then um, we realised I needed to get a new photo. So then we rushed to Sainsbury's, got a photo done and now I don't know what's happening. Her passport expires today, so her dad now is sorting the passport out in Liverpool, in India House. It's a very yeah. good time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got a really bad feeling that the will crash, and also, that, also that my dad's not going to be passport. I've already informed EasyJet. They've been very helpful, so... Uh, so far, if he's there in the, here in the next half hour, then he's with us and we're gone. That's it, done. But it's touch and go. We've got just over 30 minutes, so... If they make it, well, great. If not, have to be transferred free of charge onto tomorrow's flight. Time is ticking away. The girls decide to wait outside. If Dad doesn't arrive in time, Chloe will have to wave goodbye to her friends and transfer onto tomorrow's flight. I'm just get the, the, the airplane, I'll go and forget about us. I'm just worried if he doesn't come on time. At Luton, it looks like Leo's detective work has paid off. Hi there. I bought a champagne from the game zone. Is it your champagne? It is indeed. Yes. What's it got on it? It's got an HSA tag from a Leo in France. That's it. This has been the conversation of the afternoon. <laughs> I didn't even notice someone picked it up. Game. I was playing the game. It. Uh, what did you get it for? 
Um, comfy, uh, comfy says conference. Are you travelling out now? I am, yes. But where are you going to? Glasgow. Zach Adamson's flight is about to board, but can he take his champagne? Leo isn't ready to part with his find and rings dispatch. Okay, it's still caught. Have I, is that able to go? Because I know we had a problem a couple of weeks ago with it. I can't have it, I can't have it, as simple as that. Hopefully they'll give me a complimentary drink. <laughs> yeah, because of pressurisation. And the cabin crew wouldn't take it on. The problem bottle of champagne. <laughs> Alan, we're a bit with the champagne in his sights, Leo seeks advice from duty manager Alan Derbyshire. I'll check with the dispatcher oh, and I'm clear. I'm waiting for Hiker to give me a call back. I don't think they can, to be honest. I can't, can they? No, I don't I'm think sure they can. I tried it a few weeks ago. That's a no. We speak to the captain, shall we? Get dispatched to speak to him. Um, he can do, and I'll phone all the road. I'd like for you to be able to take it. I think it'd be a shame if you couldn't, but I do think it's going to be good. 155, All this for the bottle of champagne. No. The bubble has burst for Zach. No, we can't because they're pressurised. Sorry okay. about that. Who's in departures, Alan? Duria. It looks like he'll be needing that complimentary drink after all. And for now, Leo is left holding the bottle. Mark. Hiya. OK, we need you now in the studio. Hi, I'm Mike. Yeah, right, nice to meet you. you. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Person Mark Hobson has arrived on the set of quiz show The People Versus. But the bright lights are proving a little bit daunting. We've got this huge studio and all cables and everyone's wandering around with clipboards looking like really busy. It's really disorientating. Um, and it's amazing. You've sort of got the set over there. Um, and you can see sort of the back of it. And it's weird, you just sort of see it on telly. And, uh, yes, yeah, it's mad. It's the maddest experience ever. As the previous contestant is about to leave, right. I'll stand you by and see this little taped square. OK, yeah. yeah. So as soon as you'll step you into here, and at that point you'll be on your own, OK? All right. Everybody's hoping for the same thing that I am, that we're, they're going to win some money, take some dosh home. It'd be nice, actually. It'd be very nice. It's beginning to get to me a little bit now, I think. On Mark's home turf in Liverpool, Chloe is also feeling the pressure. The Nice check-in is about to close without her or her missing passport. With a minute to go, Chloe's dad and brother arrive with the new passport, but she still has to make it to the check-in. Yeah, yeah. I broke every speed limit to get here. Got out in um, 12 minutes from the centre of Liverpool. Naughty. Well, yeah. The girls head off to catch their flight together. Bye. At the TV studio, it's almost showtime for Mark. They showed us in the studio there's a little square that you have to stand on before you. Uh, walk on to the actual set and I'm sure when I'm standing on that square I would rather be anywhere <laughs> in the world than about to go onto that. So I've just got to wait for my clothes now. Um, at the moment I'm excited, I'm a bit apprehensive and I'm looking forward to it. So, um, I don't know, it's, it's a bit, bit weird to explain how you feel. Brilliant. Okay, can I ask you really quickly to get <laughs> into a car? Sorry, it's all such a rush. It's just That's so right, many no people problem. to get through, and then I'll chuck you into makeup. What do you reckon, green or orange? If I wear orange, it's a bit, bit easy jet. I can't. I'll go with green. I think. Yeah. Mark is up next for the hot seat. Twenty nine. The most he's won on a quiz show is three hundred pounds. Today he's hoping to top that, and for each question he answers correctly, he will get a hundred pounds. Three to the sting, two, one. Next up is Mark Hobson from Somerset. Hi Mark, how are you? Okay. Are you a well, flight you. attendant? Certainly am, yes. Let's play. What is the main unit of currency in Bolivia? Pass. The Boliviano. In which year did the Gulf War take place? Pass. 1991. Who had a UK number one single in 1988 with Groovy Kind of Love? Phil Collins. Correct. That's the way to do it. Wait After a shaky start, Mark recovers and goes on to bank £900. 
Which character is played by Patrick Murray? But if he gets this one wrong, he could walk away with nothing. You need this for £1,000. I can see him. I can see his face. Which character played by Patrick Murray? Oh, he's got the, the hat. It's... Mm, Mickey Pierce. Or go. All flipped out and all questioned out and I'm going to make a sharp exit, I think. Well, listen, you've got £1,000, Mark. Well done. The exit is there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. And it's Duncan Bickley from Brentwood in Essex, who's a commercial helicopter pilot. Yep. And I'll give you a choice of three games, one, two and three. One of straight on, football. straight off, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, enjoyed it. Excellent. Mark used his winnings to take his wife on holiday to Kenya. Joanna Wood had to reschedule her meeting, but did manage to make her deadline. And the troublesome bottle of champagne was put in a staff raffle, which Leo didn't win. It's back to the classroom for Mike and Tony. <laughs> a tricky situation for Alan. Do you know about customer services or customer you know, care? Do you have you no idea what kind of manager are you? Look at you walking away. And will diamonds be a girl's best friend? Oh.